It's more than just your output, more than a bike. Welcome to the Clip Out Podcast, episode 309. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. Hello. Hi. So, I got my flu shot in May. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Here we go again. Here we go again. I, uh, the, the place where we did the COVID study, where we got our COVID vaccines, they... They called me and they said, we're doing the same thing, but with flu. So the same, they're, they're, there's an mRNA version of a flu shot they're working on. So uh, I'm dragging a little bit. What? Oh, nothing. What's You're the, dragging a little bit because you had a very long day yesterday. Well, that also, but that, but then I also got the flu shot yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, I got up at, we had a, we recorded an interview for the superset at 7 a.m. And mm-hmm. then I went and got the flu shot and I had to be there for like two hours in case I went into anaphylactic shock. Uh, so far, so good. And then I then I had to go to work, and then I had a concert that night like at work. So I didn't get home till like 11 o'clock. So it was, yeah. a, it was a long day. And then you still had to get up and go to work on regular time today. Yes. So yeah, it's that that's, a lot. I think that might have something to do with you dragging a little bit. And the flu shot. And the flu shot. Yeah, so yeah. I, uh, you can't do it because you're too young. Oh. You have to be in your 50s. And they, <sighs> they said, no. I'll enjoy trophy wives <laughs> that's what they said that's huh? what they said well so. i think you were safe there yeah. no matter what but <laughs> uh, but uh i i am glad to not be 50 yet it's, i'm it's coming for me i'm glad you're not 50 yet too <laughs> 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 but uh so uh we should probably use this portion of the show to also <laughs> remind you that we are going to be in the orlando area so if you would like to hang out with us, we would like to hang out with you. We're going to be uh, taking the kids to Disney World because... One last time. Well, you're acting like we're never going to go on vacation. Like He's like, graduating. Like he's going to graduate from high school and we're firing him. I just think he's going to have other things to do. Oh, that kid's a mooch. He's not going to turn on a free trip. <laughs> None of them will. If your parents called you right now and said, could you make time in your schedule for us to take you to Disney World? You'd be like, okay. I would. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, um, so we're going to be at, uh, what's Splitsville. it called? Strike and Spare? Yeah. No, it's called Splitsville. Okay. Uh, and we are going to be there June 9th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to hang out. We're going to meet some people. Yeah. We'll have a Peloton we, slash clip out meetup. We did not reserve a lane. <laughs> no. So if that's important to you, you'll need to do that on your own. Yes. But we, did, we do have an area for, for eating and there's food there. And since it's a bowling alley type place there's things i like so yes plan accordingly yeah yeah exactly (laughs) so hopefully people come out we'd love to see you yes definitely and uh other than that what pray tell do you have in store for people this week we're gonna talk about some some seat slippage (laughs) (laughs) well 50 is approaching as we mentioned earlier so that's going to occur we also have uh some updates to the terms and service uh, some we're going to talk about where did the bike go because everyone's freaking out uh <laughs> the sales that are occurring dr jen stops by and we're going to talk about how to get some more protein for a lifelong vegetarian uh and we have a visit from angelo and yes. he stops by and we talk about tips for strengthening your abs we're going to update you on what is going on with all of the instructors the newest artist series we also have some past guest updates we have some interesting conversations to have about competitors of peloton okay and uh and then some in case you missed it okay and then who is our guest this week who is our guest this week why it is laura watts now you're going to want to listen to this because laura watts is an incredible athlete she 
ran Badwater once before, and she ran it this year with Susie Chan. Um, and this interview takes place before Badwater. But she has also done like an amazing a list of feats. Like I will read them. One of us reads them to you in the beginning of the interview. And it just goes on and on with all the things she's done. Yeah. Like like in, like one marathon a week for like 52 weeks straight. Like I think that she kind was of thing. running a marathon while we interviewed her. I, I wouldn't doubt it. Like <laughs> she's seriously incredible. Um, and, and also just a super nice person. So you will really enjoy this interview. And uh, I can't wait to share it with you. I've been very excited to do so. So awesome. Well, shameless plugs. Don't forget, we're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, iHeart. Tune in wherever you find a podcast. You can find us while you're there. Maybe follow us. You never miss an episode. Maybe leave us a review. That's always nice nice to see and helpful for people deciding uh, if we're worth checking out. You can also find us on Patreon, patreon.com uh, slash the clip out where you can get ad free episodes. If we get them early, you get them early, you get bonus content. Uh, I guess this is our last week of our retrospective and uh, going through every year of Peloton year by year as we unveil the timeline that we produce. Yes, and this Friday will be the final year of the timeline, so it will all be out there. Yes. So if you've been waiting until the whole thing is ready, this Friday is your jam. Also, the uh, the timelines have started showing up in uh, for all of the instructors, so I'm very, very curious to hear all of their feedback as yeah. well. You got a nice message from Tom Cortese the other day. I did, yeah. and uh, can I just say... He was still wearing his Peloton profit button. That made me so happy. Yes, because we know what a fan he is of the Peloton profit. <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah, I, I know. But here's the thing. It really cracked me up. His face wasn't visible in the yes. picture. So I don't know what to think about that. He just had some random person walking by his office, put it on. I don't know. <laughs> no, he's in a really, really sweet note. It was super, super nice. So, yes. um, yeah. So anyway, that will that's uh, that's all out there on the Patreon. So if you want to check that out, if you want to help the show out uh, without spending extra money, I don't blame you. You can do that easily by just sharing an episode in your uh, Facebook feed, Instagram, the things Crystal shares, announcing episode. You just click share there too, and it just kind of puts it in front of your friends and family who probably also dig Peloton. So yeah, you can. What else do I push? Oh yeah, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook.com/slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. Don't forget our YouTube. channel channel youtube.com slash the clip out where you can watch these things <laughs> and make see my weird hand gestures yeah that was weird it was very weird it's like all of a sudden you went to wrestling yeah <laughs> oh is that yeah i wouldn't even yeah and uh finally don't forget our newsletter at the clipout.com where you'll get a weekly digest with all the links and things like that so there's all that let's uh let's dig in shall we we shall breaking news so it, it, we are recording this segment, and it's going to drop in. So if we talk about things after this that contradict it, yeah, then we missed something, but roll with us. Okay, so the breaking news is Peloton has issued a recall for over 2 million bikes. Yeah, so everything that was an original bike is being recalled. Yes, that includes uh, refurbished bikes. So if you have an original bike, regardless of how you got it, it's included in the recall. And you can tell, like, if it's you, if it's going to be included because of the P number. So, Tom, if you scroll down, I can read to them exactly what it is. Uh, it is PL01. So if you have that product number on your bike, it is included. Here's the good news. You don't need to do a thing like send things back. All you have to do is go out to the um, the website that is included here in our article. It is a very simple process of ordering a replacement seat post. That is it. OK. And I guess those are easy to swap out. Yes, it will be done by. Yes, they're not going to be sending somebody out. So you will have to replace it yourself. OK. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that out of these two million bikes that have been out in circulation for all this time. Right. There has been 35 injuries reported reported. It, yeah. Um, and so 35 reports of it breaking. I am not saying there have not been other issues. Right. With that's seats. what I was saying. Yeah, like, there's yeah. probably been times that would fell and somebody was like, oh, that's weird. And then they adjusted it and went on with their lives. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But this is something people have been talking about for a long time. Yeah. We've seen this for a long time. So this is good. Uh, now, you will also note there has been a lot of discussion 
about the bike plus the bike plus owners are probably going to be getting an email today just saying you're not affected this right. only is talking about bikes regular bikes so pl01 and that's all um so that's it you just have to to go in and do this now you might remember about a week ago that we talked about the fact that there that Peloton had acknowledged there was a defect with these seat posts and it could cause injury and they were taking steps to remedy the situation. This was all leading up to this announcement. It's just I don't know exactly how all this works, but I know that you can't say anything until the Consumer Product Safety right. Commission is all good. And given how adversarial their relationship with the cpsc was over the tread situation i understand why they were like we need to no pun intended tread lightly yes here and like be like hey so here's a thing yeah and we're gonna do but we just want to make sure you're cool yeah everybody cool <laughs> we're like three little fonzies yeah they just want to double check so it's it's better to be safe than sorry make yeah. sure everybody is on board before you start throwing this information around yes and it's it's also good that they're being safe over sorry for just getting the information out to everybody doing the recall um so you know i think it's also important to note that um this is a very different feel from how things went from the tread plus for sure now i will also say it seems like the the severity of the risk is also significantly less right also like you, true. you could get injured if your seat falls but not in the same way that a treadmill accident could affect someone yeah yeah, yeah definitely um so here's my first question this says this recall is confined confined to the u.s market only so i mean obviously they don't make a different bike for canada or australia so not does, does that's that, not necessarily true really well because these bikes were put together in different locations you have to remember there's a wide variety of how and where these parts came from over time i do not claim to know right. how all of their logistics work I just know that they were built in different places at different times with different parts being sourced from different locations. So I'm assuming, you know what they say about assuming, right. that uh, if they're saying it's only the U.S., that means that the ones that they sold to the U.K., to Canada, or I, I'm sorry, to different areas other than the U.S. Right. Different See, post. I'm wondering if this is only because it's in conjunction with the cpsc which is a u.s governmental body oh. and that maybe there'll be something coming later in other areas yeah I, I don't be. know i'm not trying to create rumors or panic i but it but at first blush it doesn't make sense why the bike would be radically different in upstate new york than it is in ontario no that's fair right yeah that's definitely fair so so like like i said that's just my first question is like well why just the u.s that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense without knowing more details also riddle me this okay when the tread plus thing happened you remember how negatively the stock market reacted mm -hmm. so why is it they were mad at Peloton for not working with the CPSC and the stock market went to shit. Right. And then today they are working with the CPSC and the stock market still goes to well, shit. Because either way, it's a sign that like there was a flaw, no matter how minor in your product. And so you're going to have to spend money to fix it that you didn't budget for. So I get that. Um, how badly have they been affected thus far? Do you know? Uh, yeah, it's um, not great. Let's see here. Um, doo -doo -doo. And we're recording this on Thursday morning. Yeah. So, so obviously that could change by the time, yeah, by the time you, you hear this. this. It might be different. <laughs> Good yeah. or bad. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm pulling up. Last time I saw it, it was six, 688 is where it is right now. Which so, is down how much? Uh, that is down uh, almost 9%. Okay. Yeah. Not great. Yeah. Not great. But uh, it, but I mean, it probably would have been worse if they hadn't worked with them and then it came out, right? Like, it's, oh, for sure. It's I would like, say it's like when you're a kid and you do something wrong. Like if you if you own up to it, you're still going to get grounded, but the grounding will be less severe. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you would hope that that's the case. Yeah. I just I just always find these things funny because, you know, people say, oh, it's because of this or it's because of that. And yeah. it's like, well, but is it because because then this happens well so. uh, yeah i mean i guess at the end of the day they're in damage control mode and and but you're st even if you control it well there's still damage 
right? So the other way was way worse. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it really, like you said, damaged relationships. I mean, if nothing else, we are now how many years later? And, and it's like that relationship is still trying to be repaired. So regardless of what you consider the right way or the wrong way to handle it, we know it, it was very impactful on the relationship. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I think you could make the argument that this could maybe be a step towards repairing the relationship right here's an, them going through the process with a different product but having a different attitude and and a different way of interacting with the cpsc maybe it, it shows them like oh okay the new regime is going to be different and it you know and we can all get along now yeah i would hope so, i hope that that's what they take away from this um and i hope that this is a nice simple thing so if you go out to the website that shows all of the like if you go to our website we have the article there you can easily click on where you need to go to order it See, it says you can order your replacement part here uh when you click on that it takes you there and tom if you go it's super easy to do uh all you do is you click on it and you say uh this is this is my information and they send you a new one free of charge Ta-da simple yeah easy to do lots of people have done it already so that's great i love the communication i love that they have been so upfront with this and it's gone so much more smoothly than the tread plus yes and now we know all the why the bike was removed from the website for a time being right right we had a lot of questions about that so um yeah the bike was off of the website yesterday wednesday and it was gone from amazon and dicks and it's yeah. been off of those websites for a little bit like yeah. that that has been gone for a while um and then people really started noticing it because of the mother's day sale it wasn't there um i suspect by the time you guys hear this episode that bike will be back on sale again you will be able to go to go get it and it will be part of the mother's day sale again that is my guess peloton in the news so peloton uh updated their terms of service this week they did so basically this was uh telling people now if you have a problem with any of their equipment you have to go through a mediation process you can't just go through uh any kind of class action lawsuit so it's getting rid of class action lawsuits as an option right uh which you know i've never been a fan of binding arbitration when they're when it's baked into contracts like this because you don't have a choice right it's either buy the product or don't and it it, but from peloton's standpoint i also get that they are just getting peppered with class action lawsuits some of them legit most of them frivolous in my opinion and uh and so i I get why they made this change i also can't help but feel someone in the legal department was like we're issuing a recall hang on one second (laughs) terms of services no class action lawsuits okay now you can issue the recall (laughs) well and and to that point right uh so earlier we talked about the fact that the recall only was for the u.s and canada yeah well so is this terms of service Actually, um, the recall is only for the U.S. The terms of service changes were only for the U.S. and Canada. Gotcha. Not for the U.K. or Germany, et cetera, et cetera. So I find that interesting as well. And maybe, like you said earlier, that's because laws are different. That's because you can't put these clauses in. I don't know. Yeah, like maybe in the U.K. or abroad that it's like either the laws the the laws are written in a way that that doesn't encourage class action lawsuits or maybe they're forbidden from doing things like binding arbitration like i i obviously know nothing about i don't really know anything about american law i certainly don't know anything about germany law yeah yeah same same um and so not sure about that but we do know they're not included so like we can we can go ahead and say that at least yes so uh so anyway yeah if you were if if you're a class action law, lawyer It's dark days for you. I I also uh, just want to say that I thought it was fascinating that so many people could care less about this piece of it. (laughs) But as they were reading through for the first time in God knows how long, uh, they did catch that Peloton has added at some point along the way. And no, I don't know when because I could care less um, that you can only like use their equipment if you have 
um, if you're not unhealthy. And by unhealthy, they give you a list <laughs> of things that might be included in unhealthy. Like, for example, if you have high blood pressure or other things, it doesn't just say your doctor's got to clear you. Right. It, it lists out a, an entire list of health conditions. More people were upset and concerned by that. <laughs> Especially <laughs> when some people are probably exercising precisely because they have those health conditions. <laughs> that, that is exactly right. And I just think it's funny because that's coming up on across all platforms that yeah. has become the norm for uh, sure. anywhere you see exercise just equipment. Just a CYA thing that exactly. is just like, eh, better safe than sorry. Like, no. I mean, should you really not do it? Probably not. But like, <laughs> Yeah, they just. Want I think you just have to talk to your doctor and find sure. out what makes sense for you personally. Absolutely, we are not medical professionals. Don't listen to us. No, that's us. Cya. There you go. Yeah. There's our disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> so some workouts have not been showing up in the apps for people. Yeah. So on your in in the app on the overview tab, you have a list of all the workouts you've done across the board, and it seems like the total workout is probably correct, but the breakdown is different for some people. Like this is my profile uh, that we're showing on the screen and it doesn't show all of the different things I've done. For example, row boot camps are not listed here. Strength is not listed here. Um, and there's another one that's not listed because there should be a total of 12, but I don't remember off gotcha. the top row of my head. Row boot camp is on there. Is it? Okay. Right, right so at, they've changed it then because the last time I looked, it definitely was not on there. Gotcha. Um, okay. So then rowing is there. Like boot camp is there. Strength is not there, though. Um, and I don't see yoga. So there's at least three missing. And I know for a fact that it's yoga and strength. Um, and row boot camp was missing for me, but now it's back. Um, but the, the weird thing is, is it's different for different people. So like you might talk to another person that has all 12. You might talk to another person who has these and they're missing stretching not strength right it's very weird and arbitrary i mean it's probably not arbitrary but it seems arbitrary right um so i'm i'm really curious what this is all about i feel like again my gut i have no idea if this is true that it has something to do with all the changes they are making uh in the background because we know that that things are are happening for their app relaunch exactly yeah, yeah. no that would make sense yeah bloomberg law is reporting that peloton petitioned the government to relax the u.s import ban on their on their stuff and inadvertently helped nordic track <laughs> <laughs> they did but Whoops. i mean it's not necessarily a bad thing yeah but uh the the point being that hey they they did relax it and this kind of goes back to what i was saying that they do need the inventory because yeah. that's why they're going to uh at first they were like oh no big deal we don't really care if it's not like it no imports, no big urgent. deal. Yeah. And now they're like, hey, hey, uh, could we uh, relax this a little bit? So they're working on that. And you're welcome, Nordic Track. Yeah. <laughs> over on a website called Flyer Talk, there's a Peloton member who's battling with Chase over getting his points towards frequent flyer miles. This is quite the saga. It uh, is. I, I read it. So apparently... Uh, Peloton was running a promotion in conjunction with Chase where if you bought a Peloton tread, you got 10 times the points. Which is a big deal. That's a big, especially on a that high of a dollar item, right? Yeah. So you're, you know, you're talking, you know, $3,000, $3,500 ish and, yeah. and 10 times. I mean, that's a, that's a domestic round trip flight in most cases, yep. right? And so um, this, this gentleman, I think it's a man, was looking to uh, was like watching his thing. And he's like, where are my points at? And so he contacts Chase and they tell him, well, the promotion didn't start till February 1st. And you bought your tread on January 27th. So too bad for you. Lawyered. And he's like, well, wait, the images on the Peloton website said now through I think April 30th or something like that. And uh, and they were like, well, it shouldn't. Sorry, suck it. And so he is kind of stuck with trying to get anybody to take responsibility for this. That would be very frustrating. I know I would be livid. Oh, yeah, you would. Yes. This would be all over the oh, yeah. every social media site out there. That would be all every episode of the clip out would be about. Yeah, for <laughs> and real. And the fact that I was using a Peloton tread. 
but uh, <laughs> <laughs> there is that. There is that. But yeah, like I mean, I've found myself in situations like this with companies before, and yeah. I. I, I, I go somebody s- needs to honor it. If Peloton had it on their website, somebody needs to honor it. I yeah. mean, I and honestly, I think that's a chase thing because because Peloton they shouldn't have put that on their website, but they should have gotten approval before I Chase did it. I can't imagine Peloton did that in a vacuum. Exactly. Like there had to be some sort of communication between Chase and Peloton saying it's okay to put this out there now. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah I I can't imagine that this falls entirely on on peloton I, but but uh but yeah like i said if it was me man you know how i get i am I scorched earth i am like sherman marching to the sea burning the crops and salting the earth behind me when the oh when i companies am familiar do stuff like that yeah oh i yeah i've been present for a time or two <laughs> and i normally I normally win yeah you do yeah you do i mean i'm very much like oh these are the rules and i'll follow them Yeah, here's the deal it's not like tom has never been one of those people that's like way i didn't get my way no what he's like is is, is you we told me you told me these are the rules <laughs> i followed the rules right give me what you said you would precisely that, that is when he loses his mind absolutely so <laughs> good luck to this guy yeah for reals Amazon Prime Day is almost upon us. <laughs> uh, we don't know when it's going to be. I think it, the dates are in here. No, it's not. It says it's normally in July. Oh. But it, I guess it kind of shifts around because I think it's based on like the moon or something like Passover. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, Well, because Amazon is its own religion now. <laughs> Amazon sure. does what they want to do. Yes. When they want to do it. In fact, they will actually, if they don't like when the day falls, they'll actually change the lunar cycle <laughs> so it can land when they want it to. But uh, it's normally in like mid july so it but it has been announced that peloton in some capacity will be playing a role in 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 prime day now to tie that together to what they said on the earnings call you can expect some big things i think people should be excited about this because i think there's going to be some big sales of equipment or yes. merchandise uh, yes but not the bike uh. I don't know. That remains Might to be, be ready seen. <laughs> yeah, that could be back Although next... Although July's two months away. Yeah, it's, so. like, it's eight weeks. Who yeah. knows? Fingers crossed. I would say mark your calendars, but we don't know. <laughs> we'll keep you updated. Yeah. CBS News put out their list of the best Mother's Day gifts for mom in 2023. And uh, Peloton made the list. They That's sure did. Uh, by the way... I don't know if you watch Peloton's IG account, but uh, they had a little thing today about it's not too late to get mom a Mother's Day gift. And, uh, you know, here's here's the pros of getting flowers and here's the pros of getting a tread. (laughs) And I was like, were you going to get your mother thirty five hundred dollars worth of flowers? Right. I was like, y'all, I don't we do not shop for our moms the same. Like. (laughs) And and you know what? My mom would be pissed at me if I bought her a tread. She would be furious. How dare you spend that much money on me? I have no place to put it. She would just lose her mind. She would. So no, no, thank you. I am good. I would get yelled at. So. I also think it's funny. This article is clearly set up for an affiliate link for a product that people can't get. I know. So. It says the original Peloton bike. Yeah. Whoopsie. Well done, <laughs> CBS News. Well done. Well, that just shows you whatever it was. They didn't plan on it happening. That's fair. Coming up next, Dr. Jen's going to answer a question from a lifelong vegetarian who's trying to figure out how to get more protein. So stick around. The Psychological Edge with Dr. Jen. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. You may know her from VH1's Couples Therapy with Dr. Jen, her VH1's Family Therapy with Dr. Jen, or her long-running radio show, The Dr. Jen Show. She's written four best-selling books, including The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six-Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection, and Intimacy. It's Dr. Jen. Hello. Hi. So before we start, uh oh, we've been talking over the last couple of weeks about fuck the shoulds, and we've gotten a couple notes. And so <laughs> the first comes from Stephen Shirley Should, mm. and they're asking us to stop saying that. <laughs> so uh, the second note uh, yes. I have right here uh, comes from John and Carol Should. Uh-huh. Uh, they're swingers, and they say thank you. <laughs> so. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So anyway, on with your question. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, we have a question from Neva Gray. Um, and uh, I think that's just her Facebook name. But um, this one I felt like was a really good question for you because she says that she doesn't feel like she gets enough protein. But specifically, the reason I wanted to ask you about this is because she is a lifelong vegetarian and she feels like most quick and easy protein sources are more processed like protein bars and powders. But she prefers to eat unprocessed foods. But then she feels like she's not getting enough protein. I thought maybe this was something you could identify with. And I was really curious of your thoughts on it. Well, as you know, I'm a licensed therapist. Yes, not a licensed nutritionist. That said, I also have completed a certification course in plant-based nutrition. So I can kind of venture a little bit into this area. Um, first of all, I think that, well, I know that most people in this country actually have a huge misconception about how much protein they need. And what the studies have shown is that actually between eight and 10% protein is actually the sweet spot when it comes to cancer prevention. That when we get much higher than that, a lot of the studies are showing that our odds of getting cancer are higher. So we tend to over-protein ourselves. So first of all, I want to kind of break that myth that we don't need as much protein as oftentimes we are told that we do. Then secondly, in regards to where are great places to get protein. First of all, I think that most people underestimate how much protein are in plants, how much protein are in broccoli, in cauliflower, in like all of these plants that we tend to eat when we are health conscious anyway. And then the other thing is obviously looking at things like beans, nuts, legumes, you know, all that sort of stuff. Those are great sources. And like, I keep little bags of nuts. I have in, in my pantry, I have jars of kind of pre-packaged nuts and then I also keep in my purse. So like they're really easy to grab on the go and just throw in my bag, you know, pistachios, almonds, uh, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, all that kind of stuff are super easy. Also nut butters are really easy. Tempeh, tofu, you know, all that kind of stuff that when you're getting, you're getting a little more processed with that, but it's still so good for you. And I know that, that soy can be very controversial, but I also think there are a lot of myths in the countries where people are eating tofu, they have lower rates of, of cancer. So it's it's definitely worth adding into your diet and, and to consider. Obviously, when you get into things like, you know, Impossible Meat or Beyond Burger or Gardein, which are delicious and amazing, you're way more processed. But I think that finding a balance between kind of those fun foods that do have more kind of chemicals and stuff in them versus just kind of pure lentils, beans, all that sort of stuff is really kind of where it's at in finding the balance. Well, that is a lot of really great advice. And I, I appreciate you allowing me to throw you a curveball there. So thank you. Absolutely. I am always ready and thinking on my toes. <laughs> so do Impossible Burgers still have protein in them? I have no idea. They they do. It's not like massive amounts, but sure. they've, they've got a, a good amount of protein. Okay. I had yeah. no clue because I'm not going to eat one. Yeah, we, we know that. You you would be shocked, Tom. People say yeah. that, but I'm nervous. Yeah, I'm, my dad I'm just gonna is, slip is, is a meat eater and he does not like vegan food. Right. He, it's like, but he loves Impossible Burgers. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. 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 They're very... Um, very close to the real thing wow. do they have health benefits like are they is it like eating a vegetable from a health standpoint or did they just not make a burger yeah yeah no i mean look the benefits of it are you're not killing an animal right and you know some people well not some people many people would say also it's better for the environment because there's nothing worse than factory farming for the environment like it's just really atrocious there's a great show, movie called cowspiracy that really gets into kind of the specifics of how factory farming contributes to just terrible things for our environment i thought that and just from the little bit i've heard not trying to get conspiracy theory but i thought that like the the energy that went into creating the impossible burger so was pretty like there was not there a good trade-off when you compare the gas that comes from cows 
the waste that goes into the system with the energy that goes into making an impossible burger, like it's nowhere near close. I mean, like if if you want to help the environment, really the number one thing you can do, even more than like changing to an electrical vehicle or like reducing your your showers, the number one thing that you can do is stop participating in the factory farming system is to go vegan or vegetarian. And that's has a huge impact on the environment. Gotcha. Wow. Well, I have an electric car, so I'm going to... That's a... I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> She's like, uh-huh. <laughs> I've been vegetarian since age 10 and vegan for 13 years. <laughs> I could never pull it off. No, but... you couldn't. You know, you know what? You would be surprised. A lot of people say that. I have a lot of vegan friends who once said that. Yeah. Yeah. And on my first date with Eric, he said to me, I will never go vegan. And he was, he was vegetarian. And then he's pescatarian. He's like, I will never give up fish. I would never give up this. And then, and I didn't even push. He has been vegan since our third date. Wow. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm going to make a third joke, but. Oh uh, no. Oh, leave leave it. Leave it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, would, it wouldn't actually line up though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you were going. <laughs> <laughs> on that note uh until next time where can people find you people can find me on all my social media at dr jen man two ends on jen two ends on man wonderful thank you instructors in the news sam yo is contending with impersonators he sure is he says uh there it's it's come to his attention there's an account pretending to be him and not to follow it it's uh yo is it yoda or is it yo i think it's yo with two o's i am sam yo yeah and so don't follow that and he says instagram has been notified but hey i mean feel free to report away is it his instagram handle yo i'm sam yo it's it's right there on the screen in the upper left hand corner oh i can't see it the oh. way zoom is displayed, okay let so. me let me pull it up yo i am sam yo so someone took that and just added an o to yo so, so it, it's, it's you <laughs> so it's, but it's gonna look very similar if, absolutely if you're looking it up so so be careful um for imposters and always be careful because there are a lot out there yeah quick way to tell if it's the fake sam yo account uh the fake one uh just did a ride of four space balls <laughs> so, that's not real it's not real it's not real <laughs> oh sam yo would probably get a kick out of that i think he would Emma Lovewell has added another book signing event to her world tour. She will be in Newton, Massachusetts, which is a suburb of Boston. Yes. So if you live in the Boston area, you can add that to your list of things to do. You can also add to your list of things to do. uh, Watching her throw out the first pitch at a Red Sox game. Presumably they will be in close proximity. Well, that's why that's why she added the new book signing event yeah it was because of being invited ah so I see. yeah <laughs> they, yes they are in proximity it's this I weekend don't know which one came first well i mean if you never mind uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was all laid out for you but okay. that's okay um it was on instagram <laughs> It was probably your fake account that I sent it to. Yes. Um, but in all, in all, you, sin- I'm Tom O'Keefe. In all sincerity, uh, she is going to. She got invited, and because of that, then she added the book signing event over at Hummingbird Books. So both gotcha. occur this weekend, and they didn't have very many tickets left. So who knows if people will have a chance? Speaking of Mother's Day, yeah, which we weren't. <laughs> no, but, but we'll go with it. But why not? Yeah. Uh, Christine Diercole has a Mother's Day shirt available for people on her website designed by her daughter yeah and 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 christine has a lot of different things for sale at on christine so if you haven't been out there in a while you're not sure she's got all kinds of different things that you can get but uh this shirt is brand new so you might want to check it out since it was designed by her daughter victoria it's very pretty kendall will be competing in celebrity cornhole i tell you what if ever there were a sentence i never thought you'd utter that would be it yeah yeah that's uh that's a thing that's a thing i uh, I, uh yeah at first i thought it was some sort of 90s uh tour package tour i could see that corn hole yeah no no when i worked in radio 
we had all these tickets to give away for shows that were coming up. And so I put together a promotion called Cornhole Bare Naked Ladies Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. <Yeah. laughs> well, it's oh. Just, I'm just listing the bands that we're talking about. Right. That's all. Right. Get your mind out of the gutter. Of course. I'm just kidding. Please get your mind in the gutter. Exactly. I'm a fan of it. So <laughs> uh, Celebrity Cornhole. We might need to explain this to our friends foreign listeners yeah and maybe even some of our non-southern or midwestern listeners yeah that's that's fair um it's so like, cornhole is a game that you play in your backyard usually typically yeah. and uh it's two like boards set up that are i don't know equidistant apart it's like 20 feet or so i don't yeah. know how far it is i because i don't care yeah i'm sure but there's official rules there are to official people, rules but absolutely yeah. and uh you take these little bean bags and you try to you try to like throw it in the hole yeah and, and then you get a it's like, kind of like horseshoes it's, it's a lot like horseshoes it's yeah. just not as like loud and um you don't it's not as heavy so like it's not as damaging if you accidentally hit somebody right <laughs> so it's a lot safer but uh, I, I had no idea that there was a, such a thing as Celebrity Cornhole until we'd recently watched Jersey Shore. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Mike, the situation, Mike, the situation competed in last year's. And I think Benny is is also competing in this year. Oh, is he? Yeah. So. I wonder if he'll take it as seriously as Mike. Oh, that, he always does. Uh, oh, you know, he does. He is so damn competitive. Yeah. Um, but I. I really thought it was hilarious how Mike acted about it. I mean, you would have thought he was in the actual Super Bowl because oh, they yeah. call this Super Hole. Right. It's Super Hole, which is funny. It's funny playing words. Yeah. Uh, and I think they do this as a charity thing to raise a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and it's all these like celebrity people. A lot of them are from the sports area, but and they they're from all over. And they pair you up with like a... Uh, I- professional cornhole player that yeah. seems weird that that's a thing but <laughs> fair enough uh is it a professional cornhole player or is it a professional like sports person i thought it was a professional cornhole player paired up with a celebrity who sometimes was a celebrity for being a sports person because there was like a football player okay. or two but um it was like a mix mismatch of different types of celebrities but they were paired up with people who compete professionally within the sport of cornhole i gotta think you still got a day job. Yeah, you absolutely. Would I, would, I don't know. I'm I, not I mean, trying I, to insult the cornhole connoisseurs. I don't. I have no idea. I because like I don't know anything about the sport. If it's if it's like, you know, only part of the year or if it's all year. I mean, right. these things have a big factor in whether or not it's your day job. Um, but I I would have like if all the Peloton instructors, Kendall would have been last on my list to pick for this. Why? She just it's not her vibe now some people say it is it's just not the vibe i get from her yeah. like at all she I, just I seems just, like she just seems like not the person to hang out playing a game in your backyard like she's off doing things that are like i don't know like fancier fancy exactly yeah. yeah so i think it's it's great that she's doing it yeah. i just never would have expected it just to me came out of left field um i hope she gets really into it though like if you're gonna do something like this in my opinion, you got to go all in. That's yep. why I loved when Mike the Situation did it because he took it serious. He took it so seriously. And he was good at it. Yeah. He was. He was really good at it. So I hope that she does that, and and I hope she makes it, you know, to the end because yeah. it's pretty. In- <laughs> and I think they show it on ESPN eight. The Ucho. Oh, was it eight? I thought it was two. So it's I don't eight. Know. Okay, I, I think it's ESPN two. In all I, seriousness, I was, <laughs> that's from uh, basketball. Oh, the sport they make up a sport that's a miss. That's like a combo of basketball and baseball and uh it's from the creators of south park and they in in the movie they it airs on espn 8 and they call it the ocho because <laughs> it was like such a dumb sport it aired you know couldn't air on the real espn or well, two i will be curious to see how this all turns out i will not be watching but only because i don't watch any sports yeah. agreed speaking of kendall she has her own line of sunglasses with Revo. Well, she already did. This is the second year it's oh, okay. coming out, but everybody's talking about it. So I just wanted to point it out that it hit again. This is not my thing, but um, people love these. All the instructors are posing wearing them. They're just the best thing ever. 
whatever. I'm not spending $245. Yeah, that on a seems pair like a lot for sunglasses, but I know that there it are. It just shows how much money they make. And Good for them. <laughs> and there's always been high end sunglasses. Oh, for I sure. Just, I've never been able to bring myself to pay more no. than like 20 or 30 bucks. For I'm going to lose them. What's the point? Like, and, they will get lost. And now that I'm old, I'm like, I need my sunglasses to also be readers to be bifocal <laughs> readers so you have a whole different level i do so what we need to do is reach out to revo and see if they can give you a set of readers for their sunglasses oh, i'm sure they really want me to endorse their product I'm sure. because i have I'm such sure. a following yeah yeah I, I don't think <laughs> even if i had a following i'm just gonna go out on a limb and say by looking at this website i'm not their brand okay but when you look at this brand does it does it say cornhole to you that's fair. Thank you. Yeah. That was my point. Nothing about it yeah. matches. <laughs> Bex Gentry is uh, participating in a fundraiser for Every Mom Counts. Yeah, I love this that she invited people out to, you know, first of all, be part of the um, the run yeah. itself, but also to get people involved with Every Mom Counts. This is not the first time we have talked about Every Mom Counts. Uh, um, Carrie Sokol, who's been on uh, twice now, she runs all all of her marathons for Every Mom Counts. She has raised tons and tons of money for them. And uh, this one is going to be at the Brooklyn Mother's Day race this year. And Bex is going to be collecting, collecting, like she's standing yeah. there taking your money. <laughs> she's going to be doing, uh, helping them raise money for Every Mother Counts. It's a wonderful charity. And uh, I hope that everybody gets a chance to donate to it. Robin Arzan was a guest DJ on Sirius XM's Diplo's Revolution, which I think is an EDM thing. Yeah, yeah. They uh, Peloton has actually done Diplo classes. I want to say it was during one of the the all for one things where okay. they have all the music festivals. I yeah. think it was one of those. But yeah, she got to guest host and she gave. She was apparently spilling secrets about her daughter and uh, how much <laughs> how much Athena loves her to play Diplo. So that that child probably has a very very eclectic music <laughs> because because Robin is always posting about how she's like sharing music with Athena and it's all different types all different types which I love that yeah expose the kids to all different kinds of music not just one type I think that's great. Hannah Corbin and others, quite a few, participated in the One Love Foundation fundraiser gala. I don't know. I think it was a gala. It's very yeah, fancy. It does. And and the instructors that were included were Hannah Corbin, Dennis Morton, and Adrian Williams, and they were all there with their plus ones. Um, their their partners, presumably. Um, and I guess Join One Love is is raising money for people who are in abusive relationships. So uh, I love that she is doing this, that Hannah raised awareness about this and that she wanted people to check out their work and you know, try to raise awareness. And Dennis Morton, while he was there, also had a post for One Love. He did. Uh, He is going to be part of the annual 5k walk run uh, and he also posted to raise awareness so that the next generation knows the difference between healthy and un- unhealthy relationships a freaking men yeah yeah I, I was curious what this was so i clicked through to look at their website it's not just about physically abusive relationships it's about unhealthy relationships in general so you know if one party's you know coming on too strong or pressuring you to do things you don't want to do or you know there's a there's a lot of ways relationships can be unhealthy that aren't just the the i hate to say traditional but what we typically think of is like so you know a guy hitting a girl this yeah is what we typically think when we hear abusive relationships yeah and, and justifiably so that's a large number or portion of the problems but but there are different ways um, relationships can be unhealthy and it like and financial it, abuse absolutely yeah and it and also i thought one of the first things this website pointed out was like it's not just something that happens to women yep so women women abuse men men and men abuse each other women and women abuse each For other sure. it happens in Trans all and, exactly yeah, all different kinds of relationships so uh, i love that they are raising awareness for this it's it's a wonderful cause the new york city ballet hosted their spring gala and uh, Peloton was there representing. Yes, he had Hannah Corbin and Ross Rayburn and Ali Love all showed up uh, to to represent Peloton, yes. but also just to enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> and Ross Ray- Rayburn's husband, yes. who has a background in ballet so and dance, so it makes sense yeah. that that'd be 
on his list of things to do. Absolutely. Yeah, he's he's a pretty dang big deal. He is. They are a true power couple right there. They are. Kirsten Ferguson hosted track nights. This appears to be, I guess, at a college, but I can't tell which college. Yeah, I can't tell either. But uh, it was <laughs> one of the reasons that she was out there was because it was a partnership with On Running, which is a brand of running shoe. But she was also like talking to people and hosting the event, you yes. know, where you like bring people in, have conversations. And so uh, I thought that was great because I really like watching all of our uh, instructors get involved in the sports that they do. And a lot of the running coaches do that with different runners. Running events. Matt Wilpers was on the Intentional Wisdom podcast. He sure was. Episode 20. He likes to get in there early. <laughs> he likes to give up and comers their start. Respect. Yeah. And also making the podcast rounds, John Hosking was on the podcast Healthy Ish. That sounds like me. <laughs> it does. Yeah. These these are really short too. That's only a nine oh, minute. Really episode. short. Also sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just using words to describe Tom. Yes. John Hosking's a blast. So check it out. Cody has partnered with Adidas. Is that new? No. Okay. No, but it's like was, a new line o stuff. Yeah, he collaborated with them to make this outfit. That's gotcha. that's what's new. Ah. So new pair of shoes. New little joggers, little you like that, yeah. uh, and 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 then like the shorts that were all like really happy colors. That yeah. was all him too. So um, that whole all the outfits he is showing in these are all part of his designing. Feels very eighties. Yeah, it does. I think a lot of that stuff's coming back right now, though. That makes sense. Yeah. Benny Adami has a meet and greet coming up if you are so inclined and on a different continent than we are. Yep, May 16th at uh, 5 p.m. local time. We Should we say 16 May? That's <laughs> Nope. That's what people who are going to go to this meet and greet would say. Uh, my brain can't do that. We might be confusing them. All right. Well, you said it. And coming up after this, Angelo is going to have tips for strengthening your abs because you know you want to. Joining us once again via the magic of ZoomTube from MetPro, it's Angelo here to answer your fitness and nutrition questions. Hello. Hi. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. Well, we appreciate you being here. And uh, Stephanie Ward has a big question for you. Uh, She is looking for suggestions on killer core classes, not just not just core classes things that she can do but killer core because uh her physical therapist suggested that she work on that area before she starts her marathon training so i thought you might have some thoughts about that so stephanie what your therapist i am presuming is talking about is truly the the differentiation between core and abs yes there are a hundred and one a thousand a million and one killer for workouts that that you can do but what you want is something that is going to incorporate incorporate i get it there it is (laughs) (laughs) it is going to incorporate um all of the muscles working together so one of the number one core exercises you can be doing is squats and deadlifts. People don't think of that. They think that's not core, that's legs, that's back. So when you're working your core, what it's doing is it's stabilizing your body through all other muscle groups. So I would encourage you to not uh, skip the entire body, do the big ticket items, incorporate some squatting motions you don't have if you don't have experience with olympic or powerlifting probably not deadlifts but uh definitely some squats some simple things like that that you can do do that will force your core to engage and strengthen at an accelerated rate when you're adding some load to your body you can also add in a traditional ab class you can do you know crunches you can do the basics but what you really want to do is you work your core in such a way that you're resisting load or torque and stabilizing your body in different positions so that's where and i'll I'll just i'll give you an example when i trained years ago i trained aaron Rodgers, and one of his primary goals was he wanted to have a you know i really had a lot of respect for him because he came to me he didn't say you know 
make me, you know, deadlift this amount of weight, make me super strong. He said, I need to be able to take a hit on the field and walk away from it. So get me flexible, get my core strong. So every routine had planks involved, but not just a static plank. We would do all kinds of movements while he was holding some variation of a plank position. I think there's a YouTube video floating around somewhere, but we would do things like he would hold a plank position and he would catch and toss the ball. We would do uh, similar things where he was holding a plank and pushing and dragging a dumbbell in front of him. I'm not saying I don't know what fitness level you're at. If you're just beginning, if you're probably if your physical therapist is telling you work your core before you run, you're going to be starting with basic, you know, crunches, things like that. But you want something that's going to incorporate the erectors. That's the low back muscles. Um, that's going to incorporate the obliques. That's going to incorporate the transverse abdominals. That's the muscles that are worked when you're pulling your belly button in towards your spine. And you should be doing that while you're holding a plank. And you want to work the, the rectus abdominis, which is the classic crunches, sit-ups, etc. So as long as you get something that's incorporating all those, uh, you're going to do really well. One more ingredient I'll give you, Stephanie is balance balance exercises i can't tell you how much benefit uh, uh we got when i worked with pro athletes using proprioceptive challenges like a bosu ball a swiss ball things like that even just it can be as simple as this you're using light dumbbells and doing bicep curls do it on one foot balance on one leg little things like that will instantly engage the core work your core along with it and it's a twofer because it's not adding separate exercise it's not adding separate time you're just turning your exercise that you're already doing into something that's also engaging your core Uh, but there are a million and one classes online that you're going to be able to find just pick the right entry level say hey i want to do a 15 minute core class and then look through them and it after you do it think to yourself did that meet the qualifications that I was just talking about, working all the muscles, including a lot of planking um, and having elements of balance. And if so, that's going to be a great fit. That's going to do what you're asking for, Stephanie, which is to translate into running. Excellent. That's super. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all that. Before we let you go, remind everybody where they can find you and your wares. (laughs) <laughs> they can find us at metpro.co slash TCO. Thank, Thank you. Peloton Artist Collaboration. We have a new artist series from Yeah Yeah Yaz. We do. <laughs> I this is a band I've heard the name for years, but yeah. I've never listened. I have no idea what genre of music it is oh. or anything. Heads Will Roll, I think, is one of them. Oh, I thought you were really mad. I didn't know. <laughs> no, I think uh, it's one of their songs, Heads Will Roll. Gotcha. Um, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun music. It's like upbeat. I, I really, I think it'll be a good artist series. Although I have to say, I don't know a lot of their music. So uh, don't blame me if uh, it's not all upbeat. That one song is, if it's even the song I'm thinking <laughs> 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 uh, also, uh, Ed Sheeran is g- going to have an artist series, and uh, People Magazine wrote about it because it was a big deal, apparently. Well, it it's not really just an artist series, so this one's a little bit different. So um, this is going to be for outdoor walks only. There's two or three of them. Okay. And Ed Sheeran has already done a collaboration with Peloton. I think it was last year. Um, so there were there's already a bunch of classes out there, but two more just got added this week, and they are both walks, outdoor walks, and he discusses with John Hosking mental health while listening to his new album called Subtract. So uh, it's it's kind of like taking a little bit of the Ashton Kutcher thing right. and uh, adding it to an outdoor walk with John Hosking. So that's pretty cool. Love it. I haven't gotten a chance to listen to it. I'll be honest, um, walking outdoors is just not the top of my priority list these days. I can't imagine why. Yeah. yeah. I want to get back to it desperately. I feel like it's been taken from me, but I just can't do it um, unless it's at a park and then it's a whole thing. But anyway, point being, 
I am excited to listen to this. I love Ed Sheeran and I love the fact that they are talking about mental health and that's important to Ed Sheeran. It's also important to Peloton and John Hosking. Past guest update. We have a past guest update on Brittany Allen. You might remember her from episode 238 and she got her big break on Project Runway, and she is returning to Project Runway for their 20th season. Yeah, it's very cool, because they're bringing together, like, like all it's like an all-star cast yeah. so who's who of the last several years and then it's going to be all of them and uh it's it's really cool it's it's going to be very exciting for her and i hope that it elevates her even further she yeah. deserves it absolutely so congrats to her absolutely checking out the competition Surprise, Form launched an IPO and nobody knew. Yeah, well, not a lot of people know about Form. Uh, That's spelled F-O-R-M-E. And I think it's interesting, first of all, that they're calling it a fitness mirror. Um, So for those of you who don't know, Form started off trying to be a competitor with Tonal. And what they wanted to do was have the ability to, um, you could use it like a mirror, but you could also use it like a Tonal. Um, And then I, I don't know, Uh, Excuse me. I don't know exactly what happened because none of us ever know what happens behind closed doors. But uh, they they stopped offering the one that would be closest to a tonal competitor. And uh, they so you can't get the arms and the strength and all that. And they left the fitness mirror aspect of it so it's been a long time like this has been years that they have been um out there kind of quietly trying to build up their business and uh now they just launched their ipo as tom said so it'll be very interesting to see do they add the tonal like product now do they just continue on with the fitness mirror it will be very very interesting to see what they do next it's also interesting just because there are so many of these devices i also think they're already at a disadvantage because There's a product that does this that's called Mirror, and people have taken to calling all of these devices Mirror devices. And so it would be like if every indoor exercise bike was referred to as a Peloton. Yep. Right? And so like that just has got to be quite a challenge for that company. You think that they would be trying to fight back against that becoming the default name for these types of devices. Yeah, and they may be. Yeah. Uh, they definitely have a, a uphill public relations battle to fight all the way through everything. It has been a, a very tough, it's been a tough go for them since day one. Yeah. Um, and I don't see it get any better. Yeah. I'll be honest. Uh, I, I was mystified reading the article. It said they were trading at like $6 a share, which isn't a far cry from where Peloton's at. And I'm just like, the hell? But I guess they probably have a lot fewer shares and things, you know. So, you know, if Peloton had that many shares, they'd probably be trading at a much higher dollar amount but it just seemed odd to, to see that they're in the same per share cost when they have just a fraction of the market awareness let alone penetration yeah and also they <laughs> raised <penetration>. they, <laughs> they they said they raised quite a bit of money though um so i think that that is something that all these financial analysts take a really good look at it's like well how much money did you raise because right. that tells me how much you're worth um, yeah i don't i don't think that that's necessarily a one-to-one but i see where they're coming from for sure yeah other connected fitness so whoop has launched a new feature called strength trainer yeah i wanted to share this with everyone uh i think a lot of people who listen know that i've had a whoop for years now yeah four years or something and um at one point i was even considering getting rid of it just because my apple watch i thought was kind of taking over with with apps like athletic um however they have added a lot of things in the last couple of years and this one i am the most excited about it's strength trainer the idea being that thus far, Whoop has pretty much always given you a strain based on your cardio load. So if if you're doing weights, you can't really see like, well, of course, your strain is not going to be as big because you're lifting. Your heart rate's not necessarily getting up like your uh, heart rate does whenever you're, I don't know, riding the bike. Right. So uh, they have this way that you can now um, build a workout or you can use one of their pre-built workouts to be able to then do the workout and then they will measure your muscular 
your mus- muscular load. So what they do is they take the tonnage of the effective volume lifted, so weight times rep times sets, and then they look at a percentage of body weight factor and then how intense it was. So how explosively you performed each movement. And they can do that by measuring the the actual piece on your wrist. So they're going to be able to see like, oh, this is how much your arm moved whenever you did a bicep curl. Because um, it has like, I think it's called a gyroscope. Don't hold me to it. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I have been testing it out this week. Uh, I have done, uh, I've only done one so far. But what I did is I took a tonal workout and I replicated it. I rebuilt it within the WHOOP program. Um, and I thought it was kind of interesting my I I guess one of the things I want to know is a little more detail about it I would love to get somebody from whoop on our podcast because I want to dig into this but they said that my muscular load was only about 40 percent and my cardio load was about 60 percent now given that I was doing a hit workout I guess that's not crazy Um, and it was an upper body day so I don't tend to move like I have not great upper body strength compared to lower body strength. So we take those things into consideration. I guess that makes sense. But I am very curious to see how does that look whenever I do um, the same process, but now I'm doing a lower body. So some of the things I don't like about it so far are that you have to be able to, there's no way to really measure time movement. So like tonal oftentimes will have you do something and they'll be like, okay, now do these reps for 30 seconds. So then you have yeah. to, the only way you can put it in to get the tonnage is to count it. Um, so you'd have to be like, okay, I did eight that 30 seconds. But by the time you've done that, tonal's moved on to the next right. one. So good I luck mean, with that. You can pause it, but yeah. You can, but now you're losing the heart rate aspect of right. it during those, because it's usually during the hit part. Um, and then the other thing I don't like about it is that if you use a other move, um, so you can't find the move in their library they just don't include it in the tons even though you're lifting weights so those are two things that i would like to see change and i would love to see tonal and whoop work together how freaking amazing would that be (laughs) Uh, but i i'm excited about it and i want to see long term what this does so i i'm going to be continuing to use it and i will continue to give you updates and see how it impacts my daily strain i will say whoop just keeps piling on features they to, really do to their device so they do it's uh it's one of those things that every time i think oh like everybody's kind of catching up they're just like nope we're gonna stay ahead they have been laser focused on adding things they're way ahead of amazon halo <laughs> 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 they are <laughs> In case you missed it. So this week at Peloton, <laughs> they put out their this they week did. at Peloton they post. They did, yeah. So um, one of the things that's happening, our prenatal classes are going to be dropping by Robin. Uh, they're also going to have Para Las Madres classes. Several of them dropped this week. Uh, and they're going to have a live Shakira yoga flow with uh, <laughs> with uh, Mariana And uh, then there's also going to be total strength density training with Andy Spear is going to be dropping every Monday starting May 15th. And then there are also going to be Euro pop classes that are going to be launching on Tuesday, May 9th. So lots of fun. Bradley Rose is coming to PSNY. Not only is he coming to PSNY, he will be teaching two classes live. How about that? This is very exciting. For people who love Bradley Rose, you you don't get to, like, unless you just get to travel to the UK all the time. Like, this is your moment. So, uh, this this week is when they opened. Good luck to the people. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. I mean, they're going to go so fast. Yes, they are. He said, please book your bike. (laughs) As if, Bradley Rose. (laughs) As if. Peloton Apparel has a new collection that just dropped. Yeah, and so we don't have pictures of it yet because it's dropping tomorrow and today is Wednesday. Okay. But we know that the summer apparel is dropping and I'm sure it will be good and sell fast just like it always does. It always does. Mm -hmm. Peloton Birthdays. So we've got two birthdays this week coming up on May 14th. It's the clip out. Yay! So don't Six forget. Six years old. Don't forget Six. to send us cards and gifts. No, please don't. Mostly gifts. <laughs> you can send them to me. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> and uh, coming up on May 16th, it's Maddie Majacomo's birthday. Happy birthday to a wonderful guy. Love, Maddie. Absolutely. And coming up after this, we're going to talk to Laura Watts and talk all about her crazy running because she does 
Lots of it. Yeah. Amazing stories. Checking in with the Peloton community. Joining us today via the magic of ZoomTube is Laura Watts. Hey, Laura, how's it going? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yes, we're well. recording this on Easter, and she has the patience She's- of Job just to keep things biblical. <laughs> she really does. Yeah, like we've had some patient folks before, but I think uh, Laura has. She's she is def- definitely in the 98th percentile. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm used to running ultra, ultra marathons, so I'm always out there for a long time. Okay, that's, <laughs> Patience that is the name of point. the game. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, when you have technological issues, make sure it's when you are interviewing somebody who runs ultras. <laughs> yes, yeah. in, in my notes here, I have her list of accomplishments. So let's just, it's, uh, it's yeah. 139 marathons and ultras, including the Keys 100 was the first female in a 145 mile race from Bristol to London and a 130 mile race from Liverpool to Leeds. And she's also run 12 marathons in 12 days around an athletic track for 24 hours straight and 52 (laughs) marathons in 52 weeks. So I guess my first question is what's wrong with you? Why would you do all that? Why? (laughs) Exactly. I do say, I do question my life choices on a regular basis. (laughs) Until you (laughs) go to the doctor and they take your blood pressure and then you're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. "Yeah." (laughs) Yes, exactly. My, my pulse rate is, um, is, is quite low. Um, but yeah, no, I just love challenging myself. I really love like pushing the limits of my human endurance and um, seeing what I'm capable of and taking myself like way beyond it. I mean, when I first ran my first marathon, I mean, that was an incredible achievement. And it obviously it is an incredible achievement for anyone running a marathon. But I never thought I probably could take an extra step after doing that. But then you just can. You just um, can and it's amazing when you do try and push yourself what you can do and what and what races are out there. I just, you know, until, you know, maybe 2016, I had no idea about this whole new world of ultra marathons, et cetera. So when exactly did you run your first marathon? Well, I actually did my first marathon in 2003. Um, what happened was in 2002, I went up to watch the London Marathon because um, a friend was running it. And I was completely inspired by just seeing all these people, like 40,000 people running through the streets of London, what they were putting themselves through. And I thought, Oh my goodness, I want to do that. So that night I got home, I went, like, started training um, a year later, 2003, ran my first marathon, the London Marathon. And I thought, oh, that's it. You know, I've ticked that box. Um, however, I went to live in Australia for a year um, in 2005, came back after a year of overindulgence on too much cheese and wine, <laughs> two stone heavier, and thought, I need to get running again. So I literally started you know, doing one marathon a year, um, like a, a normal person, you know, 2007, <laughs> 2008. And then I increased it, get a bit more hardcore to two marathons a year, um, and then to three. And then, um, yeah, as I said, 2016, I discovered ultra marathons. I ran 100 kilometers from uh, London to Brighton in the south of England and absolutely loved it. You know, I didn't know what to expect if I'd be able to do it, but I actually found I really enjoyed it. And, you know, with ultras, you do run slower and you get to eat um, a lot. So, you know, it was it was great. So, um, yeah, that was that's when it all st- started. So I was a slow starter, you know, back in 2003, but I've made up for lost time in recent yeah, years. Yeah, you have. <laughs> OK, so I want to tie this into Peloton and then we're going to come back because hmm. I have more questions about this for sure. But when did Peloton come into your fitness journey? So um, it was I remember like quite a few years ago, because I'm a flight attendant, I spend quite a lot of time in America and being in a couple of shopping malls in the States and seeing the Peloton showrooms and thinking, oh my goodness, that looks amazing. Wow, that that is so cool. And I kind of <laughs> thought it was a luxury item. Um, and it wasn't until lockdown and COVID happened that the gyms shut. Um, and I said to my husband, oh, can we get a Peloton bike? You know, that looks amazing. So he said, oh, yeah, of course. So we got a Peloton bike. I think that was tw- early 2021. Um, absolutely loved the bike. Fell, you know, fell in love with it. All the different classes, um, as you obviously know. Um, and it was brilliant because we had lockdown. We couldn't go anywhere. So that was fantastic. And then, um, the tread, it was February last year, actually 2022 that because I was doing bad water, my husband said it would be brilliant to have a treadmill because you'd be able to do like the hikes. You'd be able to, um, what we did, we stuck some fan heaters 
against the treadmill so I could do heat training. Um, oh, wow. And, but the treadmill was the best investment ever. Um, Peloton tread, it's just incredible. We've had the, the worst winter, I think, this winter in the UK. It's just been so miserable, wet. And although I'm used to going out in those conditions, having a tread just means you can train indoors in, yeah. you know, in the, in the, with the heating on. And, um, <laughs> and I mean, the versatility that the tread has is, you know, amazing for, yeah, for all the different like, hit training, intervals, endurance. So yeah. I'm a bit of a, a Peloton addict. <laughs> Good for you. That's awesome. So are yeah, you, and so, go ahead. Are you back to doing flight attendant stuff now? Yes. Yeah. So, um, I was with a furlough scheme in the UK. So I was furloughed for about nine months, but now everything is completely back to normal. I mean, flights are full. It's, I mean, it's fantastic having people traveling again, having their freedom. Um, families are reunited. You know, people get to, yeah, people are just getting back to normality. For so, sure. Yeah. So yeah. does that cut into your Peloton usage? Cause I would think you're oh. constantly jetting around the globe. Well, um, yeah, I mean, some of our hotels that we stay in actually do have the um, Peloton bikes in them, which is always a bit of a bonus if you discover that when you're you're down route. Um, so I always pack, I've always packed my trainer. Oh, sorry, my my shoe, my Peloton <laughs> shoes. Um, but I'm actually well, I'm part time, so um, I work ten days a month, which just fits in brilliantly with my um, with my like my running and stuff. Obviously, the day I get home from work, you know, when you're jet lagged, sometimes it's an effort to get on the tread, but you always feel so much better once you've. Even if you just do think I'm going to do a 20 minute class, something like that, you know, you always want to do more and it definitely sort of energizes you, gets rid of a bit of jet lag. Absolutely. And and when did you first get into running in general? I mean, I know you said your first marathon was 2003. Had you been a runner prior to that? Or was that oh, like the very first time you'd ever done a running oh, yeah. event? I mean, I was always quite sporty at school. I was in like, the, I mean, that was obviously a long time ago, but I was in the, um, you know, <laughs> the athletics team. I did like the 800 and 1500 meters and cross country. So I had, and I'd always sort of run, you know, I liked sort of running kind of like 5k or three miles, just sort of, you know, just to keep fit really. Um, yeah and but yeah the, the marathon yeah was suddenly s- stepped up a gear <laughs> just a little bit just a yeah, little yeah, half yeah, gear yeah exactly yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you've mentioned bad water a couple times and mm. so just to be clear, what, the reason that I came across all of your amazing accomplishments was because you were in the London studio with Susie Chan, yeah, and she was talking about you had run Badwater last year, and you were in, you were coming back this year, and she's doing Badwater this year. So, it, my understanding is this is an invite only event. Is that correct? Yeah. How so, does that even happen? How do you get invited to something oh, like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So what it is, um, there's um, an application window and you have to send in your like running resume and there's, they're very, very strict about what races are like preferred qualifying races for bad water. Um, so yeah, you send in your, um, your resume and also there's quite a few questions also, um, on there about what you've given back to the sport of ultra running and, um, kind of what makes you a good person and lots of quite in-depth questions. And they've got a panel of four that review all the, um, applications. And then, yeah, they, they invite who they think is uh, the top 100, um, ultra runners. I think the, the people they think have got the most chance of finishing the race. Um, yeah. So it's a complete absolute honor to have got invited, um, I was like in total shock to, um, <laughs> yeah, to, to a big I know I, I say it's an honor. Most people think it sounds like hell. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, it does. Sound yeah. like yeah. To be invited to well, and, Death Valley in July. <laughs> I was going to say you have to tell people what it consists of. So it's Death Valley. So it's how many miles is is bad? Like tell us all the, the yeah. specs, if so you will. So it's um it's a hundred and thirty five mile ultra marathon. Um, it starts at Badwater Basin, which is the lowest point of the contiguous United States. It runs through um all through death valley um so it's in july temperatures like can be up at 51 degrees um and it crosses um two mountain ranges and finishes halfway up mount whitney which is the highest point in the united states and you have 48 hours to complete it so it's all literally all in one go yeah also known as the world's toughest foot race good god it's wait it's the world's toughest is it where because i thought i thought that the um Berkeley Marathon was the oh, world's toughest. Well, actually, that's, I mean, yeah, Badwater calls itself um, the world's toughest for it. I mean, the Berkeley Marathon is, is just like another level of insane insanity. Like they've had, I mean, I, it just sort of happened recently. And I think they had three finishers, which was just unbelievable because they hadn't had any finishers. But um, 
yeah, I don't know if there's there's a different league for the Barkley Marathons. That's just um, <laughs> that is insat. Even me as an ultra runner, that is like insanity. But yeah, that's a sort of Badwater slogan is. Um, I think because of the heat, the extreme environment, you have to have a support crew to kind of keep you keep you alive through Death Valley. And we should say real yeah. quick, because you said it gets up to 51 degrees for our American oh. listeners. Oh, yeah. That's so 100, 100, like, it's like 125 degrees. Yeah, it's 123.8. Yeah. And I know that because I Google it not because I'm really smart. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so like when people hear 51, big deal. Like, no, oh, no, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 100. Yes, because when we, we actually one section of the race is through the Panamint Valley and it was like 124 degrees for about nine hours Oof. I mean I it was like being kind of in a fan oven but but hotter oh. it, was in, it was insane so my crew literally every um every one or two miles they were stopping the support car spraying me down with water giving me new ice bandanas ice towels um and just off I went again <laughs> so yeah it was it was it was amazing it looked but tough yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that, that sounds miserable. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Why, 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 why would you put yourself through that? <laughs> I know. I did think, oh, I could have, the money I've spent on this, I could have had a, like a designer handbag or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so with all races not only do you put all this all of this energy out there you pay for the pleasure yeah, of doing it <laughs> exactly yeah paying for the pain <laughs> paying for the or pay for the glory <laughs> that's right you do pay for the glory wow that is incredible um so are do you have any expectations this year compared to last year at badwater mm-hmm. Yeah, well, last year the admission was just to stay alive and to finish. Um, and I mean, obviously the same goal this year to stay alive, but I would like to get, I've worked out a few areas where I could have got a bit quicker. Um, I mean, the time, I think the thing with bad water is just to finish it, be a bad water finisher is just an incredible like achievement, but I kind of would like to get slightly quicker. I mean, my time last year was 40 hours, um, 52 minutes. So I'd like to get sub 40. Um, so is there, just, is, is there a break to sleep in that 40 hours? How does that, or do are you running 40 hours straight? Yeah, well, I mean, there's no sort of time limit on stopping where some races do have that. So um, I did try and we took, um, we bought from home um, from a hardware store, like a fold up sun, do you call it a sun lounger, like a, a sun lounger, like a sunbed. Okay. Um, we, t- we took that with us. And so my husband put it out on the side of the road. So just for me to try and sleep because other races I've tried to sleep in the car, but I was kind of wired on like so much caffeine. I was absolutely exhausted. Um, I was kind of hallucinating. So I did need to sleep, but my brain was, wouldn't like wind down. So I attempted to sleep for about 20 minutes, but that was it. Um, I didn't like manage to, but um, yeah, some, I mean, some people are quite good at power napping on the side of the road. But yeah, I just got up and thought this is futile. I just got up and carried on. Um, but the thing is, the quick runners, if they do it in 24 hours, they haven't had that much sleep deprivation. It's more yeah. than, you know, you're, you're slower. You're, and then for the crew, bless them, for them, it's, you know, 40 hours all in a car together, four people. Um, they were trying to kind of try to sleep as well, but it's quite difficult sitting bolt upright in a car with, you know, other people and people getting in and out for doing sure. things. But yeah, so. so- if you're it, when when it comes to the crew, I know they're bringing like the waters and the ice and all the stuff you were talking about. But like, how how long are they awake? Like, I would think they have to support you before, during, and after. So like, that that seems like that yeah. they're awake. How many hours as well? well? I mean, exactly. And the, the race starts at night, so you almost go into the race sleep de- deprived. <laughs> because I started at eight o'clock at night, so you've got to go through the like the first night, then to so the next day. And then that night, the second night, they were all trying to take turns in having um, a sleep in the car. But because I had four crew, we had um, a six seater car, but the car was just crammed full of ice coolers and, you know, um, all my like, all my gear. So <laughs> it was quite tricky. So this year I've got three crew. So hopefully there'll be a bit more space in the crew van. And the plan is they're going to start sleeping early, like on the first night, um, as much as they'll so they probably won't be that excited, but <laughs> they'll be sort of, you know, <laughs> adrenalized probably about the start. But the aim is they're going to have to try and get sleep in just because obviously one of them's got to drive. You know, they have got an important job to do. And sometimes it's harder, I think, sitting at the wheel of a car, not really concentrating too much. 
It's it's a different kind of hard, yeah, because mm-hmm. you've got big chunks of time, I would yes. think. Yeah, uh, not that I've done it. I'm just picturing yeah, like, you yeah. know, you're waiting for somebody versus you're the person in action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, but, it's so true. I know. I'm like sitting yeah. and not thinking for 40 hours. No, I'm, I'll take that one. <laughs> yeah. but, but you got to be ready when she needs you at a moment's notice. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I think so I've proven point, I do that. <laughs> uh, I was like, I was running along and no, no one had got out the support car. And so I was like knocking on the window. Hi, everyone. They were having such a good time. This was at the early stages of the race, all getting on and like joking with each other. They'd completely forgotten about the runner. <laughs> but I was actually glad because I was worried that, you know, they just wouldn't, I don't know, the crew wouldn't get on or so. I was, I was really pleased that they were bonding, but at the same time, <laughs> they kind of forgot, they forgot their duties. So are these all people that you know, or do you like, are there people you can hire to help with something like yeah. this? Yeah, well, this my team last year. Um, my husband was the crew chief, and then a, f- a friend um, who's run Badwater before, and he actually. And then we had two American guys and um, a couple who are absolutely lovely. Jules actually, she's a professional poker player. Um, so they they did all vaguely know each other, um, and obviously my husband knew Scott, but they didn't really know each other that well. But this year, I've actually got um, two guys who again, have got a connection, but don't really know each other, but they seem absolutely lovely. And so, I mean, good of them to give up their time to support me, drive through Death Valley and spray me with water for 40 hours, help me achieve my goals. <laughs> yeah. no, uh, Tom read off your some of your amazing accomplishments earlier. I, I'm curious out of these, or if there's others, which do you feel you are most proud of? Oh God, I mean, that is such a difficult question because... Um, I mean, obviously, Badwater was like, absolutely incredible. Um, I mean, one thing I, people probably don't know about me is I had um, skin cancer in 2018, and um, oh. I was, um, yeah, I was, I was quite ill. Um, I had like an emergency operation, etc. Um, and then I say so I raised about fifty thousand um, pounds for charity. Um, this was over like, over the years, so I'm really proud of all the money I've raised through my running. Um, it's, yeah, which has benefited, you know, my my sort of hobby and has, has benefited others um, at the same time. But yeah, it's so, I mean, it's so difficult because every race I do, I do feel really proud of just, you know, getting, a, it's just getting a medal. I just, <laughs> I just, um, yeah, just love getting a medal. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Easily it's, pleased. it's pretty great getting a medal, but, but some of these things that you've done, are there, are there other things that drive you to like, run for 52 marathons in 52 weeks or run for 24 hours straight on a track like are there other things that are driving that is it is it raising money that makes that happen yeah. i mean it i mean it was i mean i've um but i do i love i do love trying to inspire people i always think if i can just inspire one person to um get out and run or you know get off the settee and go for a walk or do you know do something or change their life in a small way that just makes me feel so happy um and obviously you know i just do love absolutely pushing myself and just you know i see i'm inspired by other people doing sort of crazy stuff and i think oh you know i'd like to have a go at that and see if i'm you know i'm capable of doing it so yeah it's um it's but yeah i do say do love inspiring people and think well they could do you know if i can do it anyone could do it i'm kind of a normal girl trying to do (laughs) extraordinary things (laughs) Well, well, you are doing yeah. extraordinary things. You you're might, you're you, amazing. You might have been normal at the beginning, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that ship has sailed. So oh. <laughs> um, is there anything out there that intimidates you that you're like, that one's a bridge too far? Well, I mean, I think the Barkley Marathons would just not be really not be for me. But um, yeah, I mean. God, there is so much stuff. I mean, I'm doing a race at the end of the year. Well, in end of September called Spartathlon. It's, um, 153 miles from, um, Athens to Sparta in Greece. Um, and I got sort of, I got picked to do that. I had to go through a selection process, but that does scare me because it's got very difficult cutoffs. You know, you've got to get to 50 miles within 10 hours. You obviously got the heat, but I'm actually doing it. So I thought, well, I've just got to have a go. <laughs> no, I'm going to try my very best and, you know, hope hope for the train hard and hope for the best but i mean i've heard of people doing like 24 hours on a treadmill and i don't i just don't know whether i could do something i mean i've done i think the longest i've did was susie's um 70 minute class yeah five minutes 75 but yeah 70 yeah. that was i mean that was brilliant but that is the lo- longest i've actually ever done on a tread wow yeah, there's some- but but like 
at how many hours or my let's let's ask hour how many hours a week do you train i feel like you, it is a full-time job to train when you're training it, like that especially yeah when a event is because yesterday i say i did a a 50 mile run um it was an actual event but i used it as a training run um it's called the south downs way 50 so yeah that took up um uh 10 hours of my day um but i mean i don't you know i don't i suppose i don't compare to probably some runners do i mean i try and do something every day um you know maybe one sort of longish run a week um <laughs> your your longish might be a wee bit longer yeah. than <laughs> no <laughs> No, but I just, um, yeah, it just sort of varies, like you said, with work and that kind of, yeah, that kind of thing. Okay. So then looking at it a different way, is there a certain mileage that you try to reach each week or as like wh- wherever you are in your training cycle right now, yeah. how many miles I are mean, you trying say, to hit? I mean, I'd say probably 50 miles, sometimes 70 miles. I, I do feel like I do have this thing, imposter syndrome, um, but I do feel sometimes that's, I don't do as much as, you know, it's like you go on Strava or you look on the Peloton um, app on the feed and you see what other people are doing, which again does motivate me because I think, oh, so and so has done that. I must, um, you know, <laughs> I'm lagging behind. I need to um, get out there. But yeah, I feel, I feel like I've got the sort of the distance in my legs. It's um, the speed I kind of need to work on, you know. Well, I have to say that just, if you are able to accomplish these amazing feats by training less, that's impressive. Not like you need to do more. Yes, <laughs> so no, I, it's, it's that <laughs> that's incredible. Of, it's, yes. Yeah, it's the balance between like not causing an injury and, um, you know, trying to do like, that's why the bike, the Peloton bike is so good for cross training. Cause you know, jumping on like a 45 minute hill climb or um, things like that, just make, you're still doing loads of cardio, but you're just taking the impact off your legs which, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm definitely trying to do as I'm getting a bit older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of miles as, yeah, that makes sense. Wow. That's just incredible. So I'm curious if you have a favorite instructor, maybe you have an instructor for the bike, an instructor for the tread. Yeah. Well, obviously Susie Chad is um, my favorite tread, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> no, she, cause she's not only like, she's an incredible runner. She is an amazing instructor. Um, she's a friend. So me and her are the only two girls from the UK going to do bad water. So, um, yeah. And she's just like she is in real life, how she is when she presents. Um, you know, she's just so sort of down to earth and funny and with her classes you always guarantee there will be a little bit of spice if you want a bit of extra something. Um, so, but then for hiking, I love Rebecca Kennedy's hikes. You know, they are, she's got one and she does, I think it's up Grouse Mountain. Oh, and it's, you're at such a hard incline for such a long time, but that is fantastic. And then on the bike, I mean, I just say I love Olivia, Matt Wilpers, um, I do have some of our British instructors, Hannah Frankson and Leanne. Um, I, I think all the Peloton instructors are fantastic. They really are all They've all got their own strengths and, um, you know, you know which person to go to if you want a certain class. So, yeah, we're, I mean, it's such a genius idea. It's, um, yeah, really, no, it's fantastic. So yes. Do you, ha- do you oh. have any advice for people who are just starting their journey, whether it's running or biking? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I just say start slowly. Just take small steps, break everything, you know, to sort of break everything down and whether it be, you know, say running on the, tr- I mean, on the, all both platforms have got so many fantastic beginner classes, whether it's the tread, you've got the walks, you've got beginner classes, recovery runs, or if you're going outside, you know, if you think you can't run, just try run for a minute, you know, walk for a couple and just repeat. It sounds so simple. And there's so many little programs on the internet if you, um, you know, search for things and then just set yourself, maybe set yourself a small goal and work. To, and then you'll find, you know, people will find that you do you know, just try and put yourself out your comfort zone and just never know what you're capable of if you just try, um, you know, and then how the feeling of achievement of running a 5k or, you know, even walking a 5k, it doesn't matter. You're getting out there and doing it. You feel, um, you know, anyone can really, anyone can do it. <laughs> that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So what is your uh, leaderboard name? Oh, I am Laura Ultra Girl. <laughs> that seems appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Normally, we would ask you 
how'd you come up Why? with it? But I <laughs> yeah. feel like we well, can connect the dots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Very original. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and for your patience with all our technical issues at the beginning. Um, uh, before we let you go, where can people find you on social media if you would like to be found? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. On Instagram, I'm Laura underscore running girl and um, Strava, just Laura Watts. So, yeah, if, follow me if you want to come and um, have some inspiration of, um, of some runs. See yeah, you. I've been following you and that's that's a fact. It is well, absolutely. Well, congratulations to you, Crystal, on your 600th run the other day. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. No, that thank was amazing. You. I haven't um, had a chance to do that class yet, but it's on my list for um, for this week. Well, I uh, it was a great class, but Susie, all of her classes are great. So no, no surprise there. <laughs> yeah, that's 600, 600 classes is dedication. Thank you. I mean, I feel very proud of that, especially yeah. coming from somebody who's done. I mean, 600 classes was probably last week's training for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's like, I call that June. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, once again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been lovely talking to you. It has been lovely. Then, Thank you yeah. so much, Laura. Oh, see you. See you on the leaderboard soon. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right. The clip out. So I guess that's it for this one. Until next week, where can people find you? People can find me on uh, Facebook at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and the Peloton leaderboard at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, facebook.com slash The Clip Out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. And of course, don't forget our patreon patreon.com slash the clip out so that's it for this one thanks for tuning in and until next time keep pedaling and rowing and running